What is happening guys? We are back. We are back. It is finally springtime and the weather is finally looking up in Minnesota. So I've been waiting for the season to start for a minute now. Just been getting stuff ready and basically going through the boat. Like today's video is all about tackle, man. What do I actually have in my boat? I'm gonna run through some of the stuff that I'm gonna be doing on Mille Lacs on opening day. Of course on opener, I'm going to the home pond, man. I'm gonna go check it out. I'm really excited to be out there. I don't know what the fish are gonna be doing because I have not been out there, but I checked my Omnia map and looked at water temps, and I'm really sure that we're gonna have a great pre-spawn bite this year. And of course, I'm gonna run through the gauntlet and try shallow and a little bit deeper mid-range depths and really, really try to get a giant bag going first day of the year. I think, I'm pretty sure it's gonna happen. I'm pretty sure it's gonna happen. So let's get into it. Smallmouth bass. What are we doing? Mille Lacs Lake, cold water, opener. How are we gonna catch these things? I honestly predict these fish are gonna be pre-spawn. I think that the bite's gonna be pretty good. Years prior, it's been awesome beginning of the year. So we're gonna just base that off that. You know, this time of year, I'm really targeting where I think that warm water is gonna be. That is really key this time of year. Fish are moving up to spawn. They're going in obvious areas. And odds are, if you found them in spawning areas years past, they're gonna keep on using them. So definitely target those areas. I'm looking for places where they can move up and down really easy. You know, in the morning time, water starts off cold. Obviously, as the day goes on, the water gets warmer, right? So they do want to be next to areas where they can come and go pretty easily without having to travel a bunch. Um, another thing, it's been a long winter. These fish are ready to feed. They have had a uh, they've had a long time since they've seen baits. So they are going to be feeding. But presentation is everything, and just remember, it's cold still. The water's really clear. But with cold water means that the forage is going to be small still. So that's why we're going to downsize our baits and use pretty small stuff. Our presentations are going to be fairly small. I'm going to start off with a bait that I didn't show you guys last year. I've been using it for a minute and the title of this is No More Secrets. So let's bust out the secret. One of the baits that I've really come fond of guys is the rattle trap. This is, I believe it's like a Bill C. Lewis rattle trap. Um, I, another rattle trap that I like throwing is Yozuri. Uh, but we'll get into the setup. This is a Toxic Elite crankbait rod. It's fiberglass, it's a medium, and again, same crankbait rod that I threw last year, Daiwa's Tula CT, 10 pound test, fluorocarbon, Seaguar and Vizex, and we got uh, a six to three gear ratio. Now, the way that I'm running this rattle trap is I'm burning it, then I might pause it, I might reel it really slow. It really depends on what the fish are responding to. You know, if I get a couple bites on maybe a slower retrieve and uh, they don't seem to be reacting to when I speed it up, slow it down, then I'll adjust and that's how I'm gonna use it for the day. But it does depend on how I get those first few bites. Next, another bait that we use come springtime a lot is a tube. Tube is a great bait. Now, you guys can see, I don't have this rigged up with the traditional tube jig. I actually just have it on an Outcast Tackle Perfect Ned. I get a lot of bites with it this way. Now, a tube, oftentimes, when you throw it, it does a lot of this when it comes down, all right? And that's kind of the reason why I put it on this Ned. I figured out that with the Ned, if you use the head, or if you use a Ned head, this is an Outcast Tackle Perfect Ned, if you use a net head and you throw it down, it actually does want to go to the specific area that you're aiming for a little bit better. It still does have a little bit of a sway, but that point or that that head really gets it to go in the targeted area that you want to go on. Um, this is a toxic, this is a toxic tournament grade rod paired with a Dio Exist. This is the older Exist, 10 pound braid, 10 pound leader tied on, and. Uh, yeah, excellent setup all in all together, but tube, really good idea to catch bass this time of year. And as you guys can see, I'm using a 2.75 Strike King tube. And what I'll do is I'll take and I'll cut some of those tentacles off just to make it, just to shorten up that presentation just a little bit and get the fish to bite it just a little bit better. Great way to catch fish this time of year is a tube for pretty much all time of year. Like tube is a fish catcher. Next is the tried and true, man. This is swim bait. Um, 
Right now, we're running an Outcast Tackle Goldeneye. I think this is a quarter ounce head, and then I got my uh, I got my Mega Bass Spark Shad on there. Dang. Next, we got the Ned Rig. The Ned Rig is a great bait. It's a fish catcher. It's honestly like one of my favorite presentations, but I'm running this on a Toxic Elite. Uh, Toxic Elite, seven foot three, medium light, or medium, sorry, a Toxic. <laughs> I'm running this on a Toxic Elite Medium 7'3", uh, and it's our Elite Series rod, so this is a freaking stout rod, super uber light and pretty soft tip. Even though it does say extra fast, I don't really feel like it totally feels like an extra fast, but awesome rod for this technique, like the best rod for this technique. I'm running it with a Daiwa Kage, 10 pound braid to a 10 pound leader, and uh, We'll talk a little bit more about when the time is right to downsize online, but I think that this time of year you can get away with 10 pound test, maybe even 12 pound test, and still get quite a few bites. Next, like we said before, water is clear. Fish are starting to feed up, especially when that sun comes out, man. When that sun comes out and that wind stays down, those fish are gonna be moving up and one of my favorite ways to catch them in that scenario this time of year is gonna be with a hair jig. Now, hair jig is great both, you know, mid depths like 12 feet, swimming it through the middle of the water column, even when you get up shallower, you know, I'm always, I'm always adjusting my sizes. So I got an eighth ounce on right now because I think they're gonna be pre-spawn and I am gonna be targeting those mid depth range. If I start fishing in 10 feet or less, that's when I'll use a 332nd. It just seems to get snag, snagged less in the rock and it makes it to where you can retrieve it just a little bit slower. I'm actually running eight pound braid on this setup. It makes it so I can cast just a little bit further. So eight pound braid, eight pound, eight pound Seaguar and Vizx leader. And it's just, this is the setup. Now our Toxic Elite hair jig rod is probably one of the better ones on the market. Now. One thing that I really love about this rod, it's eight feet. It makes it so I can really throw this, throw this bait out there super, super far. And honestly, I know a lot of guys are putting that little piece of Senko on the back of it. I don't even do that anymore because this eight foot really makes it to where I can heave it out there pretty far. Um, one of my favorite ways to catch them is a hair jig and it is a fish catcher, you know? So I'm using an Outcast Tackle Fighter Fly again, the sizes, ranges, it just depends on it just depends on what depth ranges I'm in. And then color. You know, I'm using a black and purple. Black and purple, uh, brown, black and green, those are all great colors to use. And it's really gonna depend on water clarity and cloud cover as to what color I'm using, but probably seven times out of ten, I'm running black and purple or black and green or just black. Some variation of black I think is super effective out on the pond. All right, guys, so something that I was extremely, extremely excited for that Somatis Baits came out with, it's brand new this year, is the Finesse Football Jig, son. Let's go. <laughs> I was really excited about this because I really got into using these last year a lot. And as you guys can see, I got a little grubby on the back of it, man. We're not using a real standard trailer on the back of it. Like some guys like using striking rage tails. Sometimes I've used the somatis, uh, chromatis bait, but, and I'll, I'll take and cut it down a little bit, but this is just a little grubby on the back of it, man. So the, you can tell by the shape of this, this thing is gonna just catch them. This is a half ounce tungsten somatis baits football jig. I don't know what color this is called, but I just think it's pretty dope. And I'm gonna obviously cut this skirt down quite a bit. This thing is gonna travel through rock very well. I haven't got to use it yet. It's paired with the BKK hook. I believe it's paired with the BKK one hook and I'm excited for it, man. This isn't, again, I really like this little combo. It's a great little like uh, downsize profile for them this time of year to go and catch them with. Now, sometimes with the football jig, I have a few different ways I like to fish it. Sometimes I'll throw it out and I'll literally just lift it up and down, up and down, up and down, similar to a Ned rig. And then there's times where I have more of a dragging technique. So I throw it out and I'll just drag it across the bottom and just straight drag it. Maybe I'll pause it, drag it, lift it here and there, and then drag it. 
Uh, it really depends on how they're eating it at that time. Now, whenever I get into a situation where I'm catching multiple fish, which is a great situation to be in, uh, and I'm catching them with a smaller bait, oftentimes if I'm catching three and four pounders and I wanna try and get the bigger fish out of the school, I am gonna switch to something like a football jig. Maybe I upsize my swim bait a little bit, but it's all about getting in that situation where you can upsize your bait to get bigger bites. Those are good situations to be in, obviously. And uh, those are good situations to be in, obviously. Football jig, uh, bigger swim bait, and even maybe a faster moving bait, it's really gonna be a good way to catch them. Oh, you guys, I don't have my jerk bait rod. I gotta go get it, cause that's new from last year. I'll be right back. Ah! I'm going, I'm going. Okay, so that was my bad. I forgot my freaking jerk bait. This is like my favorite way to catch these fish. Honestly, if I could pick one way to catch them all year round, it's gonna be with the jerk bait. And the rod is freaking stout. This is probably the best jerk bait rod that I've literally ever picked up. It's a six foot nine, medium light, toxic elite jerk bait rod. The six foot nine is perfect for a guy my height. You know, I stand about five foot seven, maybe five foot eight on a, on a good day with the right shoes on. And I never really hit the tip or I never hit the gunnel on my boat. Uh, I'm never smacking the water. It's the perfect height for me. And man, when you hook up into the fish, you don't really have to worry about those fish really spitting the hooks because of the give that you have. Also, another really cool addition to this rod is the dial with the Tula SV70, which is a smaller reel. Uh, I run, I'm running 10 pound test Seaguar on it, but smaller reel, undersized, it's super uber light. This whole setup is literally like, it's awesome. Now, one of the things with the jerk bait is you're constantly snapping it with your wrist. I have smaller wrists and my wrists get kind of fatigued a little bit easier. So this really cuts down on that. I don't find that I get tennis elbow with it or wrist fatigue with it just ultra light and i really think that this rod is going to be great for throwing like smaller poppers with it uh yeah just throwing smaller top waters with it i think it's going to be great for that too we're going to find out i haven't got to use it for that yet and i kind of got this later in the season last year so i didn't get to use it a ton but uh the fish that i did catch with it it was outstanding it was awesome so the jerk bait that i'm running is a Shimano World Minnow. And as you guys can see, it's got that flash boost technology in it. I haven't got to try them yet. I don't know if they catch them, but I'm pretty sure that it, they do. But if it doesn't work out, if I don't get a ton of bites on it, um, I'm gonna go back to the tried and true. You know, I'm gonna be throwing these Mega Bass Vision 110s a lot. One color that I really like in, it's gonna be in sunny, on sunny days, Super, super sunny days, calm. When I get up on the flat, I really like throwing that Wagasaki color. I think this is a different box or something, but it's kind of a purple, gold, and silver color mixed in together. Fish really key in on that. And then on the cloudier days, I like throwing this perch pattern. I've cracked them with this perch pattern. This is more of a matte color, or a matte finish rather. So you don't have that shiny poly on it. I'm kind of excited to use it. I haven't got to throw it yet. And then from time to time, a guy does tie on. When they do get a little bit deeper, I don't have one out. When they do get a little bit deeper, either I'm fishing a plus, or either I'm throwing a plus one or a plus two. This one's a plus two. I haven't got to try the plus twos yet, but the plus ones catches them. The plus ones catches them. And they, they go, they dive at the perfect depth when I'm fishing that, you know, 12, 12 foot range. And I think I'm gonna throw this in that 12 to 15 range. So I, I can't wait to get up on, on the flats and kind of mess with these a little bit. So that kind of wraps it up for us. This is, this is gonna be the vast majority. Whoa, this is gonna be the vast majority of what I'm throwing guys. Like there are no secrets. This is, this is what it is. I strongly suggest that if you haven't got to try it yet, a great way to search them out is with that rattle trap, man. I really am fond of throwing that rattle trap around and catching them with it. 
so it's looking nice out today we might even get the boat out for like a couple hours today just to tool around i got a couple things i gotta fix on my boat as you guys like i gotta do my bushing for my trolling motor still and i got a buddy coming over my buddy brando that's gonna be figuring out that situation we kind of already we made a little cover for it and we made a little cover for it. We're gonna slap it on the top of it. Just had to air it out a little bit, or air it out. We had to dial it in a little bit and get it fitting good. So we got a ton of tackle to go through in the boat. As you guys can see, look at all that. We still got the stuff upstairs too that I posted in my story. And I got about 15 more rods to bring down to get ready too. But I'm, I'm looking forward to this. This season can't start quick enough. So my guide schedule is starting to get a little bit full. I'm doing limited trips this year. That's why it's already kind of full. Um, you can book still. I do got to still, bleh, I still have a few openings left this spring and uh, I don't know how much availability I have left in the fall, but as far as spring and fall go, it, those fill up pretty quick. Those are the best times. I always get messages, man asking me when is the best time to come up and fish Mille Lacs, it's gonna be in the spring and fall. You know, post spawn can be good too. Last year we had a great top water bite and that like sent us all the way through June. It was actually pretty cool. I had never caught them that good on top water until last year, man. So that was a really good time. I'm looking forward to getting clients on that top water bite, like big time. I cannot wait for that to happen. Uh, yeah, other than that, between July and August and going into September, largemouth bass trips, book one. I don't do a ton of them. A lot of people don't book them. I, I'm a little bit surprised because uh, that, that is a fish catching time. We go out there and we absolutely smash them. I think the last largemouth bass trip I did, we caught over 50 fish. So if you're looking to do some largemouth bass fishing, get the kids out, no live bait, hassle-free, I'm gonna do all the work, you're gonna sit in back and, and catch them, and me and your kids are gonna sit up front and they're gonna blast them uh, using live scope, and they're gonna have a good time. They're probably gonna talk you into buying a bass boat too. Or I might talk you into buying a bass boat. I am gonna, I'm gonna go do like my chores for the day. My wife is, is on me about this. I got a lot of stuff to get done before we get rolling because I'm about to not be home for the next four months. Let's get it, boys.